Bugs 3 for the wonderful world of first person view, FPV. And it's a way of thanking all those people who put up wonderful videos on YouTube that helped me um, gain the courage to do it and to realise what a straightforward business it is. So, looking down on the whole thing, um, I'll go through how I put this together step by step, but this is what we've got. And sitting in the nose there with its Cloverleaf antenna is an Isheen TXO3 3-in-1 camera that uh, took only a few days to make it from China to South Australia, which was very impressive. And uh, I was also lucky it came with a cable that fitted the Sima X4 battery and I just happened to have one spare because I'd smashed one of my Simas up. So here we go. I'll pull it back to where it was before I started working on the, the fit out. Okay, so starting starting off back with the uh, Ishin TXO3 camera, this is what it came with. The camera itself, a little clover, clover leaf antenna, and it came with this cable. Now you can power the, the important thing with this camera is you can power up between I think it's 2.5 and 5.5 volts. There's an awful lot of stuff up on the on YouTube with exactly how to configure this camera. So how I went about setting it to maximum power, 200 milliwatts, and uh, the channel I wanted. Um, I'll, I'll leave out for now because that's easy to look up. But this cable is important because it just so happened that one of the first indoor um, copters I got, quadcopters, was this poor little uh, Hubson X4. And it's been thoroughly smashed up and repaired many times. It's got toothpicks glued together. And eventually I went out, retired it, and bought another one, which uh, now I've learned to fly. I haven't smashed up yet. And I use this for indoor just to keep my hand in. But what it's meant is that it's freed up one battery that just so happens to exactly fit the small cable, where is the thing, that came with the e-sheen. So I can um, attach one end of this cable to, and I won't connect this, but one end of the cable goes to the battery, and the other end clips onto the camera. There. So they supply the cable. You need a volt that's a battery that's somewhere between 2.5 and 5.5. This is 3.7, single cell, ideal. This means I can power up in the air with this. I don't have to, um, I could plug it into the board in the bugs, but I prefer to keep it independent. So what I did with the bugs moving on is I took the cover off and under here we've got a nose light, which is now back in position. It's held by two tiny screws, which are those screws there. And all I did was unscrew it, it's unscrewed already, pulled it out, disconnected it from the board, and this is where lots of people have um, powered their re replacement camera from the board. I decided not to. Um, so that's all I did to take it out. Then to put the camera in, I've taken out a little bung on the bottom of the Bugs 3, the nose, and I've carved out a little bracket from an old um, phone card. Um, plastic card that came with this. So this thing here is cut. So turning it over, it'll fit exactly into the nose and screw and screw in. So the next thing I'll do, I'll screw that in place. Now cutting that to shape was just sort of trial and error. You can make yourself a cardboard paper template or something, and then just cut it out. So I'll stop at this point and I'll screw that into place and come back. I've now got that little cut-out plastic plate from the SIM card in, in the nose. Looking at it from a variety of angles. Ready for the camera. So I'm not quite sure how to do this. I guess I'll put the camera on the table in front of it and uh, just stuff it in. So let's see how this goes. So I'm putting the um, the cable down through the hole and I've got to confess I've fluked it a bit that I've cut out a 
Well, I kept cutting patiently until I got what I wanted, basically. So there's the there's the camera um, pointing down a little bit, which is about right, and rotating around, looking at the top of the board somewhere. There it is. I've got that cut out in front of my plate so that the camera fits snugly into it. And with the, the cable missing, the bung missing from the hole underneath the bugs, that's where I've got the lead uh, hanging out. You'll see why in a moment. So at this stage, I'll put the battery in. Right. What I'll do is I'll connect the battery up to, the, to this. So there's the, uh, the, the battery from the Sima and the lead that was supplied with the TX3 camera joined together. So what I can do now is pop the battery in somehow. Geez, it makes you realise how professional uh, people that know what they're doing with video are when you see me fiddling around like this. Anyway, I've stuffed the, the battery in there, down through the hole, and I've got a piece of foam, a foam block, and that holds the camera in place and the battery in place. So picking up the camera and looking at what we've got, looking down from the top, here's the block of foam I've just put in. It's just cut out of this sort of stuff. It's used, I don't know, in building weatherproofing clips or whatever. It's quite cheap. You could use old packaging from anything. There's the battery. So that all holds in place fairly firmly now. Um, and we've got a couple of cables dang dangling gracefully out, out the back. So at this stage, the hat goes back on. And the reason those cables dangle outside, of course, is that now it's possible to um, start, start the camera at any time just by connecting those two batteries, those two wires. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so I've plugged in the camera. Here is looking at the nose. It sticks out just far enough that it gives a good field of view, but to protect it, it's angled um, slightly downwards. And the, the wires underneath, it's important, they stick out so you can join it up when you're going for a flight. So it's fully self-contained with its little battery. Um, and what we've been using to fly is the Ishin VR6000 goggles that came with the, um, the little pepper um, indoor ducted one. It was a package, very inexpensive. Um, so I don't know how well it's possible to see into this because I've got a pair of glasses partly blocking the way because I need that because I'm a little long sighted. Um, but I think you can see enough. So if I wave this around a bit, uh, there I am looking through the camera and looking out to the back garden. So it's not ideal, but it's just to get a bit of an idea of, of how this thing works. Here we are looking at the looking at the goggles. So everyone's coming at this from a different path and going to have a different backstory. Uh, so basically, this is mine. It's um, seeing enough about this camera to give me the confidence that I'll be able to fit it to a box. Um, buying the package when it came out of the red pepper and the VR VR6000 goggles. Um, starting off and smashing up a poor old uh, Cymer X4 where I was learning to fly, which liberated a battery that just happened to fit onto the lead that came with the um, camera. And uh, then looking at so many good videos on YouTube, to finally figure out how I want to mount it. People do it a lot of different ways. You can hot glue it in, um, you can have the, the wires tucked away neatly. This is just the setup that appealed to me. I like the fact that I can completely restore it to stock if I want to. Um, I didn't have to cut anything, I didn't have to glue anything, 
Um, so it suits me. But there's no reason why as many people do. You can't just uh, plug the camera straight into the, the board inside the bugs. So big thank you to everybody that's helped me on the way. And if this helps someone else, that's the whole point of the video. Bye.